So here we are again in another interview, and now we are with uh, Gabriel Monet. But uh, I would rather, as is usual in these interviews, let him introduce himself, uh, who you are, where do you come from, what are your responsibilities uh, normally, wherever you are working. Yes, hello everyone. I am from France. I grew up in Paris. I was a church pastor in the Paris and the north of France, mm -hmm. a youth leader, church planter. And then for a number of years now, I am teaching at Collonges, the French Adventist University, Good. Uh, practical theology. I'm, I'm the dean of the, the seminary at the moment. So you're the dean of the seminary there. And practical theology, sorry, I'm going to deter a little bit. So practical theology, what's so specific about that? I mean, theology, yes. we know, but practical. Usually we divide theology in four sub uh, areas. Yes. There is the biblical theology. We study yeah. the uh, biblical languages, Hebrew and Greek, and we study the Bible text. Of course. That's clear. There is the systematic or dogmatic theology. We study the doctrines and the, the ideas on certain topics. Yeah. Then there is the historical theology. We mm -hmm. try to learn things from the past. Okay. And then there is the practical theology, that is, all things that are related to uh, Christian life, church life, and so on. It used to be somehow kind of a, a, a branch of application of the other fields. But for a number of years and decades now, we try to have practical theology as an autonomous field. And in fact, we uh, analyze practices and try to relate to other fields of theology or even human resources, psychology, philosophy, or, or others, history. And we try to rethink, to evaluate, to reinforce or change, if necessary, the practices that uh, can be the, the practices of the church, evangelism, worship, uh, teaching the Bible to yeah. young people or adults and so on, or more personal uh, and spiritual aspects, the way we pray, the pray we, we eat, the pray we uh, relate to others and so on, even somehow very common life uh, practices which are impacted by our faith. I, I guess that that is a kind of related with the topics that you have tre uh, treated in your workshops. That's right. That's okay, right. so which uh, workshops have you so given and uh, the, what about? I mean, the, well, when I was asked to, uh, <laughs> to give a workshop here, I proposed a number of topics and I in fact, I didn't think that the one who would have been uh, taken was this one, but I, uh, the title was Why I am allowed to eat everything, yeah. but I don't. Okay. So I, I, I realized that is, it is a, somehow a little provocative uh, approach, a topic. Yeah, yeah. Why am I allowed to eat everything, but I don't. And in fact, I, I wanted to, uh, well, to show in that uh, workshop that... Uh, uh, our personal choices, according to this very practical aspect of life, that is what we eat, uh, is linked to faith. Uh, yeah. But that uh, we, we are invited, in fact, mm -hmm. by, by God and by the Bible, to be responsible. Not, not only you know, have um, some kind of trends that we have to follow without yeah. thinking. Okay. We have to be responsible about what we do. In our faith, what we eat, because that was the topic, but it was not only about this, and um, how we relate to God. Do how, how we the you know the the puppets of God? Yes. Just do this without thinking, uh -huh. or does God make us someone cr Christians, Adventist young people, who are responsible and who assume their identity freely and happily? So it's a matter rather than uh, a, a list of. Uh, Forbidden things is to think about why. Exactly. Uh, in fact, we, we often... Well, it's easier to have things forbidden, th things allowed. Yeah, you don't think, you do you but just follow. But in the, you know, uh, the, uh, the Youth Congress app, I, we, uh, we were invited to ask some little polls or questions. Yes. And I, 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 I propose this question. If you are starving and you have the choice of only two... Uh, meals. I've heard meals. of that question. Yes. It has been very, very <laughs> yes, popular. I heard that, uh, yes, and uh, the one is uh, porks with lentils and a glass of water. Yes. And the other one, uh, McDonald's burger with Coca-Cola and mm. sweets. Yes. Okay. Objectively, which one is the best for health? Yeah. Ooh, that's a uh, tough question, isn't yeah. it? I think objectively. It's the, well, the, the worst is the hamburger with the Coca-Cola, the sweets. Yes. Right? But 
with pork, we have, well, we don't eat that. So we, are, we don't allow ourselves. And the young people voted much more for the second one, which Don't is forget. worse for, for health than the, the first one, which is very interesting to, of course, we, we should avoid both. Okay. Yes, of, of course. course. Of course. Uh, but th that was just to help thinking about, well, I don't eat pork, but well, I can drink Coca-Cola, eat many sweets, and that, this is not forbidden, so I can do it. But in yeah. fact, if you understand the goal that God is giving us yes. about the, the, the proposals that he's giving us for what we eat and what we drink and so on, we have to be responsible and not only abstain from what is forbidden, but be responsible for the all whole. new kind of food that we can uh, face today, for example. Yeah, yeah. We, we probably think that there is something that is not, as you said, forbidden, but probably is worse yes. than other things. So I understand that some people could have taken, uh, that mean that we are allowed to eat pork? No, that wasn't the goal, it was to make the people well, hungry. <laughs> in fact, I do think, if you understand well, yes, a number know. of texts that Jesus is saying that's not what is entering our stomach that make us unclean or whatever, yes, that's but that's true. what is going out of our hearts. Of course. Uh, and, and so everything is clean, everything is pure in itself. So, in fact, we could say we are allowed to eat, to drink anything. On the strict point of view of, uh, of law, I uh, mean, yeah. okay? But if God said that, advised that at some point, that he, means... may have, he may have had some good reasons. Yes. That's why I am allowed to, but I don't because I choose not to. Uh, that's the point. That's the point. But uh, uh, no, no, not everyone understands that. Yes, exactly. But I think it makes more mature Christians yeah. and a more wide... Uh, uh, vision of uh, what what we uh, we uh, I, we are. I have another question. Uh, you say that this was one of the topics that you suggested, but not the first. And you were surprised that that was the one that was chosen. Choos and I was also surprised that so many were there at the workshop and that so many people answered the question and asked questions. Uh, they already had the questions prepared. Yes. Why? Did you put that in the list? I mean, I, I guess that, that, that that's part of the, your, your, your thoughts and you, you had a goal on that. Why is it so interesting for you? Because I think Christian life should not be disconnected from real life. Mm, good and point. And too often, we kind of have two separate roles. Uh, the life at the church, the life of my spiritual dimension. And yeah. then there is... Well, my life with friends, school, uh, while do job or whatever, and of of course uh, I'm caricaturing now. Uh, yes, uh, there, there, there for many I think there are some things, but not not maybe as much as we should have a, a real holistic life and everything that I am, that I do, that I think, that I speak. Uh, I am a Christian. Yeah. I am an Adventist, and I have to be uh, relevant in the the relationship between all these areas of, of life. So you actually are awakening, uh, how could I say, consciences. Consciences, exactly. That's, that's, that's what you. I know that that's one of the things that you always <laughs> do with every preaching that you you preach, with every class that you teach. So you are just awakening consciences and inviting people to think by themselves. That's uh, good. Yeah. That, I, mean, I, I love that. I yeah. love that. I love and to that. have somehow uh, not a critical point of view of what has been received, but to to put question, to have questions. Yes. Uh, so that we may start having answers. Uh, Jesus is asking so many questions. He doesn't give so many answers. Well, he gives somehow. That's he true. helps people think. I think we should do that as well. Uh, yeah, you, you, you got the point because when he was asked, he answered by other questions. By other questions. Yes. That's <laughs> right, man. And that, what was the feedback? You just said that there were a lot of guys, a lot of youth uh, with questions already written down. So, what are your feelings after the workshop? So, what, what did you bring out of that? What's the positive thing or something that you want to underline now that you've given that? Yes, well, um, there are many things, but uh, maybe what I can <laughs> say is that I felt that uh, people somehow, some of them were a bit worried about, uh, you know, but if we are free? Uh, are we really free? Uh, what, what about some rules in the Old Testament? Uh, and uh, this is somehow unsecuring. Uh, okay. But some of them, but they said, well, in fact, 
somehow it's good uh, because we have to bring our own values. Uh, uh, but most of the feedback that I've had is that uh, they, were, uh, they were a bit surprised somehow by the path I took in my uh, workshop to arrive to this idea. What am, am I allowed to eat everything, but I don't. And uh, especially the fact that uh, this thinking about the clean and the unclean, uh, about the, the evolution of the diet in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, uh, at the beginning, we just ate uh, cereals and uh, fruits, fruits and nuts. And then, and then after the fall, we have we vegetables. Have yes. And after the flood, we, we have the, so, the so meat, meat and, and so on. So showing that uh, uh, th there is an evolution uh, and also thinking about the different kind of laws and then I gave three main reasons why I don't eat everything, yeah. which are first theological reasons, because okay. God is God and I have to follow his advices. That's very important. Mm -hmm. For health reasons, of course, we usually make this one the main reason. And it's a good one because I am the temple of the spirit. I am God's creation. And we have this holistic view of human. Mm -hmm. And that's important to be uh, aware of our health mm -hmm. in order to have a better relationship with God uh, in our faith but also for ecological reasons. Oh, uh, that's something that we never think about. Yes, and I think it, that, that, that was, I had a very good feedback on that because, um, for example, I, I, I shared my testimony that I yeah. don't drink, I don't, I'm mainly vegetarian, but I said to the young people, well, of course that's an option, which I think is good, that's yes. why I chose it, but maybe you are not vegetarian and that's not a problem. Meat is allowed. Uh, of course. And not all of them, yeah. okay. Or, or, I mean, all of them um. is allowed, but I should not advise all of them to be eaten. But uh, for example, I say, well, let's say chicken, like yes. well, it's clearly everybody would accept if you eat meat to eat chicken. Yeah. But I said, well, don't eat any chicken. Be sure that you buy or you go to a restaurant where the chicken has been uh, raised. Really raised on a responsible uh, way. way. Uh, no because otherwise, yeah. you don't assume the responsibility that God gave us to take care of all creation. Okay, that's uh, a good point. So, uh, and also the fact that uh, eating less meat, for example, will uh, contribute to uh, a more uh, uh, sharing of the resources that are yeah. limited on the earth as we are so many now. Oh, that's good. That's good because you're, you're bringing new view, points of view to all that yeah. discussion and that makes us think. So I, I really appreciate that because the youth is always questioning things. Yeah. And uh, we all adults, we, we don't want to answer questions sometimes. We say, yeah, yeah just follow yeah. up. And that, that's that's uh, something. Now, the point is now is what would you expect as a result, as a follow up? of uh, your workshop uh, what what would you like to to see afterwards the people doing the young yeah, the young people doing and how do you think that that will um, influence the local churches when, once they go back well or at least what my, would you my like topic was very targeted so about the church life i don't know but, but, but uh, somehow. Maybe, maybe yeah somehow two, two points maybe uh, i'm thinking of the first one is to really um Live by grace. Understand good. that we are That's a, a church one. of grace, and yes. not. I mean, the law has its place. The uh, well, but freedom, grace, liberty, uh, and so on. That's at the core uh, of our faith, uh, and that's important to realize that we have to be liber Jesus is bringing liberation, uh, not uh, wow. uh, not the contrary. Um, so that that's the first element, maybe, and the second one would be to have uh, young people who uh, are happy to assume some specificities of Adventism. Wow. Uh, but uh, to have a, a positive view of our identity. And, instead uh, of yes, a instead of a, yeah. I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't eat this, and, uh, and so on. I choose, I, cho I choose Help. to do to, to th this or that. Yeah, yeah. And, in my workshop, it was about health and food, but yeah. as for, I mean, the principle is much larger than this. Yeah, of course. Uh, I assume a positive way of living my faith. So that's awesome, because that, I guess that the, the main goal will be to bring a new point of view and understanding of the faith, so that we probably 
gradually change the understanding of, of the church, the church yeah. eventually, because yeah. this generation is going to take over. They are already taking over. And you know, I, I think Adventism is at the <laughs> core, I mean, the, at the front of a number of societal uh, topics. Yes. And with health and ecology, for example, we are way ahead of so many groups or uh, churches. That's and true. we have points and credibility and relevancy uh, in the world with that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I was young... <laughs> we, we, are, we are young, we are young, I have uh, to say that. <laughs> uh, when I was going with friends and not drinking alcohol, I yeah. was, you know, people were looking at me strangely. Uh, I would say, I'm vegetarian. Well, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> now, you say that in society. And they admire wow, you. Wow, you have the, the courage to be that. I want to follow you. I mean, so let's be examples. Let's assume our identity happily. And uh, and uh, that's a good uh, way to witness, in fact, and to give people. Uh, uh, it's part of evangelism, in fact. Mm -hmm. Every day, normal relational evangelism with our friends and so on to assume uh, our choices that are not the core of our faith, yeah. uh, because we are not saved by what we have in our plates, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, to understand that little things of of everyday life are impacted by our relationship with Jesus. Oh, you're talking about um, what we were supposed to do since the beginning, witnessing with our daily life. Exactly. That's the point. So, Gabriel, I, I really appreciate your workshop, your point of view, because you are refreshing the, the faith of uh, the youth, bringing them back to the sources, mm -hmm. which is very important. We forgot a little bit about that. And now, uh, talking about the, 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 the whole event, what do you appreciate the most? Or, the, or what would you stress or underline uh, about the, the, the whole thing that we are living here? You know, Youth Congress, that's spirituality, fun, relationship, yeah. um, and uh, everything is important. Yeah. Uh, but I see young people on time for the spiritual meetings. The most important meetings, that's not for fun, that's for spirituality, okay. for Bible uh, study and Bible preaching. And they are here, and the songs, the, we see the, the whole room singing, being in relationship with God. And that's, uh, <laughs> that rejoices my heart. Oh, uh, I'm wonderful. glad to be part of that. And I see uh, this young generation, at least the ones, or most of the ones who are pre real, uh, present here in, uh, in Lahti, uh, that are young people dedicated, happy to praise God and to think with the Bible, with words, God's Word, and that's uh, very encouraging. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Thanks to, to Gabriel for having your time with us. Thanks uh, for this uh, consecrated design for the interview. Thanks for your workshop. Thanks for your ministry. And you as well. And, uh, <laughs> no, but you know, <laughs> and thanks for, for all the time you have uh, put apart to redirect and to readdress several questions to prepare a new generation that will prepare the path for the second coming of Jesus. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank well, you so much. That. And uh, see you in the next one. <laughs>